Hello and welcome to Surrey Library's Nature Walks. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Amanda and I work at Godalming Library and I've been sharing some of my walks with you celebrating the Surrey countryside. This month I've been walking along the Riverway towpath, around Hindhead Common and also Box Hill. The author, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, built his house undershore in the Hindhead area, and this is where he wrote many of his novels, featuring his ever-popular detective Sherlock Holmes, including The Hound of the Vaskervilles, which was inspired by Hindhead Common. Flora Thompson, author of Lark Rised Candleford, lived in Greyshot and Liphook. She spent as many hours as she could spare walking over Hindhead Heath, one of the insects that Flora would have seen and appreciated is the butterfly. The sight of butterflies in their gorgeous array fluttering from flower to flower is such a joyful sight and butterflies are perhaps our best loved and most visible insects visitors to our gardens, woods and fields. You can get some ideas of where to walk to see butterflies from the Explore Surrey website and from the National Trust Butterfly Walks. Look out for purple emperors, commas, holly blues, meadow browns, marbled whites and painted ladies. Butterflies have inspired many authors and poets. Most of us are familiar with Eric Carle's Very Hungry Caterpillar, who eats through everything in sight, who builds a cocoon and come, becomes a beautiful butterfly. And this story has inspired children all over the world. A butterfly and caterpillars play an important part in Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler's book, Monkey Puzzle. Much loved author Jacqueline Wilson's Butterfly Club is a story about a triplet finding her own individuality through butterflies in the school butterfly garden. I'm sure that many of you have favourite butterfly stories let us know what your favourites are. Spring and summer are crucial times to support butterflies and moths. They need warmth to be active and fly and they need to drink nectar for energy. If you can provide both, you'll have a butterfly haven. The best way to attract butterflies to your garden, patio or window box is to plant butterfly friendly plants that will provide nectar to adults and food to caterpillars. Flowers like lavender, marigolds and buddleia are ideal. You can also leave grass to grow long in the garden and leave fallen fruit on the ground. For more ideas on how to provide a good habitat for butterflies, try the Natural History Museum's website. Another way to attract butterflies to an area near you is to make a butterfly feeder. A butterfly feeder is suitable even for small gardens, patios or balconies. Did you know that butterflies taste with their feet? Having taste receptors in their feet helps them find food such as overripe fruit. It also helps female butterflies find a plant that their caterpillars can eat and which makes a good spot to lay their eggs. So today I'm going to show you how to make a butterfly feeder for your garden, balcony or window box. To make your butterfly feeder you will need a plate, a small metal ring like a key ring, some scissors, a tape measure, some wool or string, a piece of metal wire or some string to hang your feeder in a tree and some overripe fruit. I have some fresh fruit here but butterflies are more attracted to overripe and rotting fruit so you could save your apple cores or overripe bits of banana. So first of all we're going to make a kind of hammock to hang the plate in. So you want to cut six lengths of wool each about uh, uh, 2.75 metres long. Uh, you can use string but I've chosen wool for the differing bright colours. So when you've measured out your um, six pieces of wool, um, you want to fold each one in half and 
take your metal ring, thread the folded piece of wool through your metal ring and bring the ends of the wool through so that you make a loop or a little knot. And then keep working with your six pieces of wool until you have six knots around your metal ring, like that. So now measure 30 centimetres from the ring down your piece of wool and tie a knot. And again, work around your pieces of wool until you have six knots. So once you have your six knots, you want to measure 20 centimetres from that knot to the next one. Uh, separate out the outside piece of wool, measure your 20 centimetres and then join that piece of wool with the next colour along. So you're making another knot And joining your threads. So work your way across until you have five knots measured 20 centimetres from your first knot. You'll be left with your two outside pieces of wool and you will need to join those together. So we'll tie a knot there. So now measure your plate and measure 24 centimetres. Um, that's the width of my plate is 24 centimetres. So um, I measure 24 centimetres from the second knot that I tied. Then I pull all the pieces of wool together and I tie one big knot. At that point. So now I've made a kind of hammock to hang the plate in. Place your plate in the hammock that you've made. Spread out your wool so that it supports the weight of the plate and now you're ready to hang this in your garden. Once you've hung your plate you can cut up some pieces of fruit to put on your plate. Remember that butterflies prefer rotting fruit um, so choose those leftover bits or the bits that are starting to rot. A sunny day is best because that's what brings um, butterflies out more often but you still may need, may need to be patient. To help identify the butterflies that you see, you can borrow some beautiful information books from Surrey Libraries. Thank you for joining us today. We'd love to see the butterfly feeders that you have made. Please do post your photographs and comments on social media so that we can see what you've been doing. For more craft and adventure ideas, Follow Surrey Libraries on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you and goodbye.